I feel like I'm noticing, and I just want to kind of validate it with you or, or get your opinion on it. Um, I feel like businesses are, are because of you know Facebook, because of LinkedIn, uh, because of Twitter. I, I think there's a general cultural shift more towards a personal emotional connection between people, and I feel like that's that's starting to transfer to business, and that people want to know their business at a deeper level. Uh, the businesses that they do business with. Uh, I, I think that people want to know them at a deeper level and a more more emotional level. And you know, blogs help that, right? You know, when we were at MBJ Summit, we talked a lot about the use of blogs and how CEOs need to be transparent and, and emotional um, to really connect. Are, are you noticing that trend as well? Is that is that a shift or a major trend in marketing from kind of this professional corporate image to more of an emotional, personal image? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense, and I do see that trend. You see it in the most, uh, you see it in a lot of interesting ways. Uh, let me cite a couple of ways. I saw a thing recently, you know, uh, there we go. I thought I lost you for a minute. Screensaver. Um, <laughs> screensaver. Um, I saw an article that they're talking about Walmart and their new logo, and the fact that more companies are going to logos that are warmer and friendlier in terms of colors. You notice they went to this kind of, kind of sans serif look that's a little bit warmer, warmer tones, warmer colors. Mm -hmm. And it was talking about how certain typefaces are friendlier and how corporate America is trying to put forth a more friendly personal image to the consumer. And I thought that was interesting to note. Mm -hmm. Certainly reflects that trend. The other thing I think that people are finding with Facebook, and I'm finding it in my own experience, is you got these people who are your friends that you know on a business level and all of a sudden you see pictures of them out with their kids and you're thinking, oh, yeah. And I, I find it really uh, refreshing because then you see these people in professional settings and you've got something in common. Hey, you've got a Shih Tzu, I have a Shih Tzu, you know, or, or oh, the Grand Canyon, I was there a year ago. And so I'm finding that it, it does open up a level of understanding. You know, this whole transparency thing kind of, you know, a, 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 a decade ago it was sort of the purview of the LOHAS consumer, this lifestyle of health and sustainability, this very you know, transparency oriented consumer. But now I think we're finding that that transparency is spilling over into more of the general business population of people. You know, you can find out anything about a company by getting online. You can find people who are blogging from their cubicle. It's, it's just, it's almost a forced transparency in some ways. And so I think a lot of companies are either embracing it and making it work for them or they're embracing it kicking and screaming because they can't help it. Right. You know, it's a, it's a forced situation in many, in many scenarios. I think it's going to be really interesting. You know, my days at Procter & Gamble, it was very formulaic. Uh, in fact, it was way to the logic side. And if you got logic on this side and emotion on this side, it was way logic. I mean, we've been doing this for 200 years. Don't tell us. We know exactly how to launch a product. And I can imagine that Cincinnati is probably pulling their hair out because this, is, this emotional shift um, is significant enough to really, really wake up the PNGs of the world or the, those folks that are, you know, big company, that kind of thing. And I think that that plays well into the natural products industry. We've been doing, we've been, we've had that attitude of emotion, transparent, uh, leading with your heart, if you will, for a long time. Uh, we're kind of ahead of the bubble. Agree or? Yeah, totally agree. And I, I came up with SC Johnson and it was the same way. Product management structure, you know, you take six months to make a decision, you know, you're it's very by the book and it's business is different now and it's uh, it's it's really a kind of a whole new era. It's pretty it's pretty interesting. What what advice would you give uh, let's just say a, a smaller company, five million dollar company, ten, fifteen million dollar company that or even a bigger company that hasn't necessarily done this in the past, that really needs to how should they connect emotionally? Um, what's the right way to to utilize these tools to make sure that they're connecting with the consumer um, in a more emotional way? Well, I think that it, it can come in terms of there's both style and content issues in my mind. There's style issues is the way the company looks, the way their website appears the way they're managing their convergence marketing strategy, the appearance of their literature, that whole outbound communication, the, the style in which they communicate, their press releases, that sort of thing. And then there's the content kinds of issues, which are, you know, uh, green initiatives would be a great example of connecting on an item that consumers are increasingly concerned about, you know, sustainability kinds of issues, which is a trend we're noticing as lots of companies 
trying to jump on the bandwagon, whether they can do it legitimately or not, is a whole other uh, radio interview. Right. But it's you know it's it's hot to be green right now, and so that's an area where consumers are connecting. And and so I think when you can find areas of common interest with your consumer, things you care about, they care about, cost marketing, you know, which has been around for a long time. Uh, is now coming way to the forefront. You look at Vitamin Angels and all the corporate sponsorships. They can't, Vitamin Angels can't, uh, they've got too, too many people knocking at their door. I mean, the point is with the industry, people are realizing that being associated with a good cause is a way to make their companies feel more emotional, more human, and they're taking advantage of that. You know, and if you, interesting, and Robert, I, I don't know, I, I wonder if you're noticing this. If you look at marketing in general across all categories, it is getting more emotional. Yep. And I think a lot of that is because uh, technology is such that it's hard to have an advantage and to have it for very long. And so in terms of the huge differences between companies that a few decades ago when somebody got a technology, it took people a little while to catch up and they could kind of lead out with that. Now it's more that it doesn't take the competitors long to figure it out and catch up. And so those more emotional connections with a consumer become more important because it isn't, it isn't all about the logical, technical, we've got a better widget. It's about who does the consumer think of first when they go to the store. Right. And who they trust. And you, you tend to trust people you know, right? And so there's, I think it's just huge. And I, and I saw it even as, as far back as uh, when I was the CEO of Garden of Life, you know, we did a, a rebranding, we did a uh, new packaging design. And we were, you know, smart enough at the time to, to invite some of our really hardcore loyal customers to take a look at it. And their first response to our initial design was, that's too corporate. Um, and I feel like there's a slide towards that now where you've got big corporations looking at companies, let's just say in the Aloha space, and saying, you know, we need that consumer credibility that they can't build because they're too corporate. So there's a slide away from being too corporate to being very real and authentic, which is very difficult to manufacture. You're either real and authentic or you're not. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, and I even look at the airline industry and the uh – you know, when Delta did their spinoff and when United did TED, I mean, you look at Southwest and how casual they are. They're making jokes on the planes, you know, as they're doing the uh, safety uh, information. And it, 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 it's that whole idea of the airlines even have tried to spin off more friendly, uh, fun, consumer oriented, emotional spin offs of their more corporate selves. That, that's another place where you've seen it. Yeah, and it's difficult for them. <laughs> it's really got to be tough. <laughs> yeah. So, I, and I love it. I think it's going to be great. It's going to make for a more fun uh, marketing.